here. Okay, very quick. I apologize, guys, for the speaker. He was he will be coming on Friday if you guys want to come. Uh, be, I mean, you're welcome to come. For the design part, what you're looking at is a commercial building here. You guys are doing residential now. With Steve, you'll do a commercial building. This is a, a 15,000 square foot commercial building. And what we do is we do a lighting calculation for it. We have a software that's called Visual. And what we do is we build all these, um, um, what we call them uh, room or solids right here. So this is, for example, happened to be an area um, where you can build a box. Let me just pick an area that's really, here's a bathroom because it's this is done. Here's where a bathroom is. We have a bathroom and we decided that we're going to put a lighting calculation for this bathroom. We put two fixtures like the ones above your head right here in that bathroom and we did calculation and we came up with all these brown numbers. We'll give you the foot candle. I don't know if you went with them with the foot candle calculation. You guys will do it with Steve, I think. Do you do, you do it, Karen? Well, you don't? Okay. There's a, there's a, you do, you can do it by hand. Obviously, nobody does it by hand anymore, but we have a software visual, Nick, you're familiar with it, that does all the calculation for you. That's what designers do. And when you guys work in a commercial industrial project, you are expected to do a lighting calculation for the project. So that's just basically, I'm going to show you what, what it does. The most important thing is what we call it the statistics. Um, so, for example, if I go to a room one, um, um, here's uh, here's the room that we're looking at. Is that room 113? The bathroom is room 113. It will show you, I don't know if you guys can see this area here from the from out there. It will show you the average foot candles is at 22. If you look right there where you're sitting right now, probably you're looking at 50 foot candle average in that room. So you can kind of compare what 22 foot candle. The maximum is the brightest bulb on the tree. The brightest spot in your room is 30. Uh, the, the, the dimmest area or the darkest spot in your room is the minimum and then they give you the maximum to minimum ratio and average to minimum and average to maximum that will get you a distribution of your lighting system you care about the average and you also care about the brightest spot and the darkest spot in your room so your eyes when you walk into a room it's not too dark in one area or too bright in another area so anyway so that's the most important thing about this calculation that we do with this software um, when we finish with it, when we're done with it, we export it to CAD and then we import it back into Revit and then we lay out all your lighting fixture. Now you guys are familiar with that one. You put all your lighting fixtures in the space and then you circuit these. You guys are, should be able to circuit, right? We circuit typically 18 fixtures on 120 amp circuit 120 because the, the volt amp on them is less than 100. And then we put occupancy sensors on them and or low voltage switches. That's why you guys are here. Occupancy sensors and low voltage switches, and uh, we turn them on and off. So that's the fixtures that I thought just to show you. This is just happened to be one room um, of of it that we um, that we that we do. Here's an open office. The whole open office here is is one big open area. So anyway, so just so show you how they do the calculation. Um, with with you guys, uh, any comments about this? You guys can download this software if you want to, free of charge. Go to Visual. All what you have to tell them is tell them that you're a student at Dunwoody, and they will give you a license. Our students get a license for one year. Um, otherwise, you have to pay for it. So it's really easy to do. If you wanna, if you're interested in doing it with Karen or with Steve, I know you're done almost with Karen, but if Steve asks you to do it when you go to Steve, go to um, go to my YouTube channel. I have lectures how to use it if you want to impress steve with your lighting calculation um that will be the best way to go okay um so that's what i what i wanted to show you guys but the other thing i wanted to show is uh, this is what we what you guys are came to be i'm not your lighting speaker but let me tell you what we have and what we're trying to achieve here you guys are very familiar with um with the lighting panel we're having a 200 amp Lighting panel. You guys are familiar with that one, right? You're familiar with three phase. You're familiar with three phase, right? Three phase. This panel is 200 amp. It's a uh, uh, 208 slash 120 volt three phase panel. And from this panel, we're going to go to a lighting control panel. That's why you guys are here. This is called lighting control panel. And from there, we're going to go to a room. There's has a bunch of lights. There's one light, two lights, three lights, and four lights. So here's a lighting panel. Here's a, 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 a lighting panel. 
here's a lighting control panel, and here's a room with three lights, and you are to, to wire this system and turn it on and off from uh, knock businesses. Right? That's what you guys, I don't know if you have done that. You know how to do that with a switch. With a switch like this, we call it right home, switch like this. Easy, right? Just bring the hot to the switch, switch and go there. Here's how they do it. I'm going to use the blue. Let me use a different color here. So uh, let's use the red. So the first thing you do here is you take a 20 amp circuit. Here's my 20 amp circuit. And they nibble, what they do is they nibble between these two panels with a conduit. You guys can do that, right? You're electricians, you nibble them between the two panels. And then the first thing you need to do when you have the lighting control panels, you need to power the panel. The panel has a brain in it, electronics that need to be powered. So the most important thing that you do is you take a 20 amp circuit from here and you put it right here. There's a transformer here that take it down to a 24 volt. And that will be, that will be the brain for this panel. That's my brain of this panel. And of course, you need to take the neutral with it. So here's my neutral. Let's put the neutral here. And you take your neutral, you go all the way to this side. So that's the first thing you do to a lighting panel. You, you dedicate a 20 amp circuit to feed and power the panel, right? Because the panel has a brain. That's the single most important thing that you guys do. The first thing is power the panel. The lighting panel need a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Then, any comments guys about this? Powering the panel. Does it make sense? Powering the panel. Okay, the second thing that you do is uh, inside the panel has a multiple things. Um, their contacts, I'm going to go, uh, here's contact one, and here's contact two, contact three. And with each one of them, did you guys do motors, right? You did motors, right? The relays inside the panel, the ones that you guys have, Douglas, one that you have exactly the same, has the relays inside it. These are contacts. And each one of them is driven by a little coil here, a little coil. Cool. And then together, these make up relays. Here's relay one, relay two, relay three. So this is my relay one, relay two, relay three. Inside this panel, there's multiple relays. Does it make sense? The first thing you need to do, guys, when uh, when you have an occupancy sensor, let's take. Um, Let's put a green as my occupancy. Here's my occupancy sensor. My occupancy sensor is sitting right here in the room, right? Occupancy sensor, you walk in, it senses that you're moving, it turns things on and off. The way we wire them is you bring, here's my 24 volt. Remember that 24 volt here? I'm going to use the, you come from here to this side of the coil. Can you guys see that? I came to one side of the coil. And then from, uh, from the other side of the coil, it's going to be messy a little bit. I'm going to go all the way here. Um, and then you're going to go to the occupancy sensor. And from the other side of the occupancy sensor, you're going to go to the second side of the coil. So now this occupancy sensor acts like a switch. When it senses that you're here, it, it brings a 24 volt across this little coil. Can you guys see that? It acts like a switch, turning things on off. So you bring two wires, one to the coil, the other one to the occupancy sensor, two wires to the occupancy sensor. Now that is like a switch. When you, in the sense that you're moving, it closes. When it closes, it brings a 24 volt right here. Can you see that 24 volt now across this coil? Now what happens when you bring a 24 volt across the coil? The coil will close. Okay, so now how is, now this is how your coil closed, but how does the light turn on and off though? We haven't done anything with the light. So now we close the coil. The second thing you need to do is take, which part, I'm going to take another circuit from the same panel. Can you see that? I'm taking another 20 amp circuit now. And this 20 amp circuit is going to come here. And I'm going to go land it on this side. Can you see where side of the contact? Out of this side of the contact, I hope it's not going to be too messy, coming out of here and I'm going to pipe it all the way to this room. I have my pipe coming all the way to this room, right? Ignore my, my piping system. And I'm going to take it all the way down to light one, light two, light three, light four. That's your hot. So what I did, guys, what you do with the hot exactly like when you, how do you switch a light? You bring the hot to the switch, right? 
you bring the hat to the switch. Instead of bringing the hat to the switch, I brought the hat to the contacts of the relay. Relay one. The relay has contacts, two sides of a contact. You bring a wire coming out of the 20 amp circuit into one side of the contact. From the other side, you pull the same wire back into the lighting panel, put it in a conduit, and take it all the way to the room that you want to power with. We're still missing, anybody knows what we're still missing here for the system to work? I have hot to the light. What else do we need to make a light work? Neutral, thank you. So let's use the color, a blue for the neutral, just so well, we're using green anyway. I want to use, here's my neutral, same thing. You bring it right into this conduit and you go from light to light to light to light. I hope I... I did not confuse you guys with uh, with with uh, this occupancy sensor right here. Let's just use the blue for it here, and let's use the blue for that one and the blue. Too many. There's too many colors here. So that one for the occupancy sensor. Can you see that? So your occupancy sensor, this this wire here, this will be your two, number two uh, number sixteen two cable 16 to that you bring to the occupancy sensor back into the uh, lighting panel and these are the the conductors right here will be the 12 12 2 cable or two conductors number 12 in a conduit okay you bring yeah here's the neutral coming here with it they typically allow you to just see what we did we took the new the hot only to the panel switch it, and we brought it back yeah. that's equivalent to bringing the hot from the top to the switch switch it and bring it back yeah. so what you're looking at there's an occupancy sensor now if somebody's move it closes now this relay is energized relay number one is energized relay number one will close this contact now will close can you see that now the light is on stays on for say 15 minutes you sit at 15 minutes if nobody moves the contacts will open and the light will go off does that make sense that's kind of the principle in terms of wiring why do people like it guys the people like it because now you have a number 12 uh, 16 tool and the voltage here is 24 volt this is this is power limited like what you guys do it these are power limited technician can install this system you don't need a German or a master to install it. A power limited can install it. It's safer. The shock hazard, an arc flash, um, an arc blast, arc flash shock. It's very, it's very safe. 24 volt is very safe voltage to work with. So right to the occupancy sensor where it's located, you bring it a 24 volt to get that signal from it. So that's. Yeah, I wonder if So that's yes, sir. A disconnect in it? Yeah, it is a it is almost a disconnect. It's, it's yeah. It just the occupancy sensor guys is a fancy switch. That's where an occupancy sensor is. It's a fancy switch. Instead of you walking all the way here and turn the light off, the occupancy sensor sense that you're there. It triggers mechanism that turns, turns the switch on. I keep it on for, say, 50 minutes. If no motion is detected, it opens it. It's a fancy switch. So now in this room here, this is say, this room, instead of having a switch in the wall, I can have an occupancy sensor right there, walk in, the light will go on and stay on as long as there's a motion in it. The way the occupancy sensor guys, they, they call them the two technologies, they, can, they have eyes and ears. They have a technology where you can hear you. If you move, it can literally hear you and stay on. And if, if also can see you. If you move, it has waves, a synth wave that can see you. So they have two technologies. Uh, one will see, one will hear you. So if you're moving or making noises, it will turn on. Yes, uh, Brian? Uh, I think video is asking, like, why is that the normal relay panel? Yeah, the answer is Sometimes I do a little bit, but sometimes it's a little bit like that. Like it has, you know, a high frequency sensor that's just in the switch. But as far as like building controls, like they want to be able to see if you're building it, it's not a little bit like that. You have to control it from under. So that's why they use a fan
that's a that's a very good point. Now, why what why bother? Why bother? I could have put, put a switch here. Occupy systems will give you uh, auto motion, so you don't have to turn things on and off. Number two, what I did not show you guys here, right in here, there will be the controller. In the controller, here's the funny thing about the controller. The controller, you can have your iPhone, you can program your iPhone to energize this little coil instead of an Occupy's sensor. So I can go from my iPhone anywhere in the world if you have the password and you can con connect via the internet to this controller instead of bringing wire, the controller actually is connected to a relay, same way, and you can turn that relay on and off via your iPhone. That's why we use a, a lightning control panel. Not just for occupancy sensor. So, and and it's and it's not just like if I also want to send from my iPhone to turn all the lights on, it can energize one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Typically, they have an in increments almost like the panels, increment of six. You can have six relays in it. Each relay, guys, is a circuit. Typically, a relay is a circuit. One amp relay, you can put one amp worth of energy in it. So here's a relay, one amp. I can put. For 20 amp, we put close to 18 fixtures like these one above your head. 18 of these fixtures can be put on one relay or for coming from a 20 amp, number two conductors number 12, and they are turned on and off from an, one occupancy sensor. To give you an idea how many fixtures you can put in a 20 amp circuit. Uh, they're running at 120. So that controller can, they can control one or all of these relays. Turn them on or turn them off. Yes, Nick? Yes, Ethernet. It, yeah, it's wired. Either yes, good point. Now with this, you have to have a, a connection to the internet with it. Yeah, typically wired. They have an internet connection to it, so you have an IP address on the network. Yep, you have an IP address on the network, and you can. Uh, that's how you can t talk to it. That's what the beauty of a lighting control panel. That's why we have a lighting control panel. You can also guys. Um, that we have uh, light harvesting. We have a little device. See that picture right there next to the window. If the if it's very sunny outside, you want to turn this picture off by itself because it's sunny. They have a light harvesting device, little device that measure the 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 light coming out of the the outside. And if the light is at a certain level, it will turn off that particular picture. There's a relay. They put that picture in a relay and turn it off. To control it, why? To save energy. So you can imagine all these big buildings that has windows all over. During the day, they can turn off not all the rows. They can put typically they control two rows. So if I have one, two, three rows, they put this one and this one. If this wall is all windows, they put them on, on a day harvesting um, sensor. It senses the light coming in if the light is sufficient enough by design it will turn these two rows off and keep this one off to save energy that's another way of saving energy you can do this one perfectly with one a lighting control panel exactly that uh, light harvesting device is exactly like an occupancy sensor it's except instead of sensing um motion it sends light lumens that are coming up from the outside so that's your basically what you do, what we call it mapping. You bring a 20 amp circuit into the relay panel, map it, switch it, and bring it back and take it with its own neutral to the location that you want it to turn on and off. So you're having two circuits here. One circuit is the power circuit going to feed the light. Another circuit, that blue one, is your control circuit that's going to the occupancy sensor to the lighting control panel. We have, uh, you can have the Douglas lighting, the one that you guys have, can have up to 48 relays in one big panel, and they're all in out. You can have two inputs coming to it. Can you guys see that? This one here, that's the low voltage input. I didn't, this typically coming from a, a conduit, low voltage input, and this is the high voltage input. And there's a, there's a divider. They typically have a divider right here between them. You'll see them, guys right here where the low voltage is one side and the high voltage in another so you can meet the code you can't put them on the same side any comments guys any questions to just to summarize it here's here's the concept here's your light here's your contact and here's your relay 
So when you when you bring a 20 amp circuit, you really all what you're doing is my 20 amp circuit coming into the contact, out of the contact to the light, and of course you have to have a neutral for the light. So here's my neutral coming directly to the light. This is my neutral, and then for the occupancy sensor, for the which color should I use? It should use hot. For this one, here's a relay. Here's your occupancy sensor. Occupancy sensor here. And from here, it's coming out of a 24 volt, oops, 24 volt transformer. So you can see here's my activist sensor. When I, when this closes, it put 24 volt across, 24 volt across this relay. And this will close. Did you guys do motors? Do you remember how motors work? Exactly like motors, right? Except it's turning on and off a light. So here's your thermostat, like a, exactly like a thermostat. Remember the thermostat turn on, your air conditioning goes on or off, and exactly the same. So this will close, energize that coil from the 24 volt, that's which is right here, that 24 volt, turn the light on and off. That's a concept of lighting control system, low voltage lighting control system. Any comments, guys, questions? And instead of, for my students too, you guys are, for our project, you guys are going to be doing occupancy sensor. Instead of also doing occupancy sensor, they do something called low voltage switches like these. They look exactly like these, except they are switching 24 volts. So for my students and for you guys, instead of this device here being occupancy sensor, this could be a low voltage switch, exactly like this. We call it low voltage switch. Exactly like instead of occupancy sensor, you have to walk in and turn it on and off, except you're turning, instead of turning the light, you're turning it really on and off, which turns the light on and off. On and off. So for design students, when you guys are going to Revit and laying out your low voltage um, switches, you're looking at the switch that we call it low voltage. It's going to be a 24 volt switch. This is a 24 volt. That's what low voltage switch is. You just put the switch, turn it on and off. So you can have occupancy sensor. You can have a switch, you can have a, a light harvesting device, like I said, to for save energy. What else you can have? Um, you can have your iPhone, a little device here that can send the signal, close the contact here, turn it on and off from your iPhone. So that's the principle basically of operation for, so I have my lighting panel, which is typically bringing the power, interface with a, uh, a relay panel, which is lighting control panel, via the power, breaking the power, bringing it back to the light, and the low voltage going directly into the coils of a relay. Any comments, guys, questions? So what's in it for you? Yes, sir. Uh, for the timer, for the access sensor, for the timer and the sensor itself, or in the computer? If you, if you guys have a chance to swing by on Friday, he has, there is an adjustment on it. You can adjust it 10 seconds, 10 minutes, um, 15 minutes. You can adjust it to a limit. You don't want it typically 10 to 15 minutes. You don't want it too long because if it's too long, it defeats the purpose. The idea of having an uh, occupancy sensor, guys, is to meet the energy code. In Minnesota, as well as in the U.S., in order to design a system, you have to meet energy code. You can't just put right now with the ASHRAE. We have an app called ASHRAE. Um, 2010, I believe, um, in order to meet, in order to design a commercial building, you have to have some type of an automatic means of disconnected light, or you will not meet the energy code. It's not, it's not your option. You have to have it. So you have to have the occupancy sensor there for to to meet the energy code. Now to meet the energy code, you need to set them at 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, if you put them at an hour, I might as well just <laughs> put a, a switch on the wall. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, in the in the sensor itself, the the sensor itself, yes. There is also a thank you. There's also a timer. What you can do, guys. Also, I didn't. You can take this relay here and make. Can you can see that little coil here. You can make this coil controlled by a timer. Just that little coil can put a timer on it and control it by a timer. So instead of a relay here, you can have a timer, which you set it up to turn on and off at a certain time. Like uh, they have a function in most of lighting control panels, guys, at night around 10.30 when everybody goes home. Most of them, most of the professionals, nobody stays later than 10.30 when the janitors comes. What they do is they have a timer inside the panel 
that sweeps, they call it sweeping the light off. So what they do at 10 o'clock, it will send a signal to every one of these relays, bang, 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 open them at 10.30. So that's sweeping the light off to save energy. Yes, sir. Nick. Uh, they have a master switch. It says if you came after hours, they have a line control. In the line control panel, we have a bypass. <coughs> and you can go to typically they have a bypass. You have to be authorized to do that, and you can uh, you can flip a master switch and override the timer. Either you can override the timer for the whole panel or individually. Some of them even here. See if I came after 10:30 and the light is off. Some of them depends on what. I, they have a switch here where you can turn it on and it will override uh, the sweep. Yes, sir. You know, a lot of times what they do with the building I work with is the panel has timers that do sweeps. The first sweep might be like 730, which kind of tells you that it might be for the same thing. I call it like, well, but then when you die from the center, like you see your watch out or you do something or whatever, it'll turn the lights on where you are and then the next sweep will be like 10 o'clock. Yeah, multiple levels. Yep. Multiple levels. Yeah. <laughs> but do you guys see the, the concept? Why do they go to the concept of having um a relay like this? The last thing I'm gonna tell you is they have something um instead of say if you don't want to buy a lighting control panel, it's too expensive, right? You just want to have an occupant system right now, retrofit. See if I want to put an occupant system to turn all these lights off or not, right? Very easy. They have something they call a power pack. You can buy it a relay. See, can you see that here? Right here. You buy a, a box that has a relay in it. You mount it, you nibble it to a junction box above the ceiling here, tie it to a junction box, and it acts exactly like you're looking here. You bring the power to it, the hot and neutral, you switch exactly the same thing, except instead of this relay sitting in a panel, you can have one individual relay in a box sitting right above the suspended ceiling. They call them power pack, they're very common. If you don't have a lighting control panel, because it's expensive, you, should, you can have just a power pack right above in this room. It only controls this room. But you can't talk to this power pack from uh, your iPhone then. Yes, absolutely. Well, line voltage you bring here is a line here, but the, the low voltage is you still have an occupancy sensor. So your power pack is above the ceiling and your occupancy is here, and your occupancy is sitting right here. And you wire the occupancy sensor all the way to the power pack there. Yes, you see them all the time in this dashboard. We have to turn the switch into a motion detector, right? Which is motion detector, uh, 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 you know, an occupancy sensor. A fancy occupancy so you put it right here. If you move within the limit, you will turn on and off. Yeah, they use it typically in residential. You see them all the time, put them in the basement, you walk in, the switch itself. Um, line voltage, you bring the line into it and there's mechanism. So the occupancy sensor or the motion detector is embedded in the device. In a commercial, typically what they do, they separate them, they separate the relay from the occupancy sensor. So your relay will be sitting here and your occupancy sensor is somewhere else. Can you have a device that combine both of them? Yes. So typically not in a commercial though, an industrial. Any comments guys? I, I wasn't supposed to be your speaker, but my the speaker has not been contacted. So you blame you're looking at the guy to blame here. <laughs> yeah. 
You guys are Did you talk about uh, class two circuits with them? Control circuit? Yeah. So this is this will be class two circuit. This circuit here, we could, I could call it class two circuit 725, which means you can't put this circuit, the 16 2, with this circuit in the same pipe. You have to separate them in terms of wiring. Okay? Cool. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks. I'm not supposed to be the speaker today, but there you are. Sorry, guys. Your speaker didn't show up. <laughs> He's coming on Friday if you guys if you have time. Think about it. Okay. Sorry, Karen. Thank you.